So I'll start uh, by thanking the organizers for giving our lab and me the opportunity to present some of the research that we've been doing using uh, our favorite tool, the AFM. Uh, and especially I'll be talking about dissecting uh, integrant mediated ECM sensing using AFM based SCFS or the single self force spectroscope. However, uh, it'll be uh, wrong to not mention how we have used AFM as a tool to answer several different uh, types of questions over the years, because AFM is also a tool to explore multi-scale biology, where we have uh, tried looking at many different uh, uh, higher order cellular structures like uh, mechanical um, uh, multicellular assemblies. We have uh, tried looking at uh, neuronal behavior, uh, stem cell biology. We have also concentrated a lot of research on cell surface receptors and how they, uh, a lot of uh, cell surface proteins that can form pores, and also a lot of GPCR uh, related research. So, uh, with that, I'll start what I'm going to talk about today is uh, mainly mechanical cues and how they are involved in disease and homeostasis. So, uh, in several diseases like cancer and fibrosis, there are uh, events like cells flowing from one side to the other that happens in metastasis or fibrosis where there are constrictions in the normal function of uh, organs. These are mapped by ECM production, which is increased in these diseases. And also there is a lot of cell proliferation and migration. However, what remains missing from a majority of research in these diseases is the impact of mechanical cues like compression, flow, and confinement. These mechanical cues are also involved in many other diseases like fibrosis of several different organs and uh, a lot of cancers. These are also essential for uh, homeostasis, which is very important for uh, development, repair, and regeneration. These mechanical cues are uh, collectively sensed by the cell by processes known as mechanosensing and mechanotransduction, where a cell first senses these mechanical cues and then passes on uh, as chemical signals in the cell. Now I'll go more in depth on how the cell would do this. It is First, there is uh, the outside of the cell, the extracellular matrix, which is an assembly of proteins like a meshwork. There are these receptors called integrins, which are connecting the cell to the ECM. And then there's the intracellular engagement through which this whole sensing works. And together these form the ECM receptor cytoplasmic axis, which you can see in function here in this video where a cell is moving and constantly probing its uh, surroundings. And these assemblies that you see are called adhesion sites. These adhesion sites, if you uh, like take a snapshot of them, can show you different components. And uh, one of the major components of these adhesion sites is this receptor called the integrins. Integrin receptors, I can uh, go briefly through them, is uh, they are uh, expressed on the cell membrane, so the surface of the cell, where they have two different subunits, an alpha and a beta subunit, and they can be from uh, three different main domains that they have. One is ectodomain, one is transmembrane domain, and one is the cytoplasmic domain, which is intracellular. Integrins are known to be very interesting receptors because they go, they undergo uh, like very transformational uh, changes while they perform their function, which is the mechanosensing. So they go from a bent close to an extended close to an extended open conformation, where you can see the protein uh, swinging out and away from the cell membrane. And finally, this was a recently proposed uh, structure with some evidence that you can have an extended open force sensing uh, structure of integrin as well, where they can be tensile forces from the ECM being applied on the protein, or they can be tensile forces from within the cell being applied on the protein. What we also have done over uh, the years in our research in the lab is also explore the function of mechanical forces in directly uh, implementing these transfor transformational changes in the conformation of integrins. We have concentrated mostly on RGD receptors, which is a tripeptide expressed on several ECM proteins, but also on uh, some collagen receptors highlighted here in red. 
And why we have looked at these uh, integrants specifically is because they give rise to several different kinds of uh, asso uh, integrin associated complexes, which are assemblies through which the cell is able to uh, probe many different environments that it can be found in across the body. How the integrants function on the cell surface uh, are that they can go from the inactive to the active conformation, as you've seen, but on the inner side of uh, the cell, they can also recruit several different proteins. And over time, or over application of more force, these assemblies grow stronger, and there is signal amplification finally resulting in these assemblies that I've shown you before. Integrins are also important drug targets because of all of the functions that I've shown you so far. And there have been uh, several different drugs that have been developed over the years, especially targeting the interest uh, integrins that we have studied in the lab. But in fact, there are also no drugs that have uh, been developed so far for integrins like the alpha 2 beta 1. Right? So that's why they are very interesting uh, research topic because of their uh, presence across the body in different organs and uh, their targetability in the many different diseases. But the main uh, point of research in our lab and through the AFM, because it's such a precise and uh, high spatiotemporal resolution tool, is to explore different aspects of the cell ECM interaction, and especially over the addition timeline between seconds, minutes, and hours where a cell can go from ECM detached to an ECM attached cell, it's very well understood what happens here within minutes that the integrins assemble these uh, signaling complexes and form these assemblies that uh, we have seen before. However, what is not properly understood is the adhesion initiation and the early mechanosensing of the ECM. And also what is poorly understood is the role of mechanical forces or mechanical load in this early sensing. So basically, we would like to ask three different questions that while mechanical load is acting on uh, integrins, how the ECM sensing occurs, how these receptors are responding to the mechanical forces, and what are the intracellular uh, components that support this overall ECM sensing. To do this, we uh, attach a cell to an AFM cantilever, which is the force sensor. And then we... Uh, use this to probe different ECM ligands. Over time, we can uh, do an approach with the cell to the ECM uh, coated substrate. We maintain a certain contact. Thereafter, we retract, giving rise to different kinds of uh, events that we can record using the AFM. And eventually, there's a separation where the cell separates from the uh, ECM ligand completely giving rise to an adhesion force, which is our main readout. On the inner side of the cell, what is happening is a cell goes from an unbound state to an adhesion, uh, adhesion initiation state, and then it unbinds and uh, the adhesion is disrupted, which we record as the adhesion force. Over the years, we have also contributed uh, to multiplex this uh, kind of an assay where you, we have developed these uh, four chambers using PDMS where you can simultaneously study different ECM ligands with a cell. Uh, 